In this presentation, we will continue applying overhead to jobs. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our job cost and company dashboard. We're going to first take a look at our Excel sheet to see what our objective will be. We're continuing on with the overhead. We're going to go a little bit faster this time because we're going to have the same kind of sequence with the overhead, even though we're going to have different basically items for it because all the items are similar in that we couldn't apply them directly to the job and therefore we have to use some kind of method to apply them to the job. We're going to apply them in accordance with the ratio which we saw last time. So last time we completed this one for the cost of goods sold, that's re related to the indirect labor. Now we're going to go to the indirect uh, materials. Indirect materials, things that we couldn't apply directly to uh, the job, like glue or grout or something like that. So we're going to have to use some kind of allocation method, which will be our percentage method. It's still going to increase cost of goods sold, which in QuickBooks we're going to break out into more detail uh, for the cost of goods sold under like the overhead category of cost of goods sold for... Uh, and then we'll give more detail on that in the type of category, indirect uh, materials. And then cash is going to be going down and we're going to assume we're paying whoever we pay for the indirect material. So if we go then over to the right, I'm going to go ahead and say we did this one. So I'm going to make the ones we have done yellow. So the yellow ones are the ones that we did last time. So I'm going to make these yellow. This is an attempt to, to be less confused and mixed up as we go forward. So we'll see if it works or not. But I think the colors are quite effective, actually. And they, they, they won't stop me from getting confused, but they um, lessen it. So then if we were to to add these three up, so if we add these three up, we're at the 30,000. There's the 30,000. Let's go back on over to uh, QuickBooks here, and let's go to New. Same process as last time. We're going to say we want a new expense, a new expense. So we'll add the expense item, kind of like a check, but it's an expense here. And we're going to say that we're going to be making a payment to Staples. We could use a check, by the way, if you if that's how we were paying them. This is going to be a new vendor. I'm just going to pick Staples as the vendor. So we're going to set the vendor up. It's going to be coming out of the checking account. We're going to make this as of the date of uh, the 30th, it looks like. All right, let's pick it up. All these happened on the 30th, seems like whatever we'll keep it all on the 30th here and then payment let's just say cash check cash we'll keep it cash and then we're going to go down to the category we're going to do a similar process we did last time but actually not the category i want to go down to the items <laughs> similar process as last time where we're going to set up new items and then new accounts within them both at the same time here it's going to be great so indirect materials i'm going to just going to type it in there tab and then it's going to say, hey, we don't have that account. I'm paraphrasing the, so the software. And so we're going to put it into a non-inventory. And then I'm going to hide, I'm going to copy the indirect materials that we want. I'm going to put that down here in the description line. So we'll put that in the description there. Put it down in the description here. And then it's going to the correct sales account. This is the double-sided uh, items that we've set up before. And then we're going to say it needs to go into an expense account, but I don't have the expense account set up either yet. So I'm going to type in the same thing here, indirect materials, and set up an expense account for it. So I'll simply add the expense account, but it's going to be a cost of goods sold, not just any expense, but a cost of goods sold kind of account. I'm not too worried about the second one here. I'll just put it into other usually. And then I'm going to say sub account. This is like the important point. It needs to be a sub account of the overhead right let's pick up the do it right this time because I, I messed that up last time but we're going to pick up the overhead and then i'm going to say save and close so that's good and we set up the account and then we're going to set up the item save and close and that should be good so there we have it and then we're going to say the amount is going to be 5700 because that's the amount that will be billable and applied to job number 14. job number 14 and then we're going to do the same thing indirect indirect materials here and this one is going to be for 9900 and that's going to be the amount that will be billable and of course apply this time to job number 15 our second job and yes we will do this one more time indirect in Di there's a D direct materials and then tab and this one's going to be going for the 14400 
it's going to be a billable item so we'll say it's billable as well see kind of a pattern here there's going to be 16 16 because that's the job or account so that's th these amounts of course line up to the amounts that we broke out in accordance with our percentages which is the 19 the 33 and the 48 that adding up to the total of the 30,000 so now that I have these highlighted I'm going to right click on them I'm going to make them yellow and those look good all right so that that looks good let me just check that one more time yeah I think that's good okay so now once we record this what's going to happen it's going to be writing a check decreasing the checking account by the 30,000 that's going to be a check we're assuming it comes out or goes to the vendor of staples and then the other side's going to the materials which is going to be driven by the items going to the uh, expense or cost of goods sold accounts here and then also being applied to the job or projects 14 15 and 16 in you know vertical order respectively okay let's do it again we're just going to do the next one so i'm going to say save and new and we'll do this a few more times similar process i'm going to go back on over to uh the expenses over here back to the excel worksheet let's go back on over to the left and see what we have uh next and that's going to be the utilities now it's on the factory or wherever we do our work so again that utilities is something that we do all the jobs or part of it there right and so we don't know where to apply it so we're gonna have to use some kind of percentage method to do so therefore the journal entry is going to be the same 12,000 debit 12,000 credit is going to go into cost of goods sold we'll make it more specific when we put this into uh quickbooks meaning we'll put it into the cost of goods sold with a subcategory under factory overhead and under the category of utilities and then cash going down assuming we're paying something like the utility company someone like edison as we will see and then we're going to be picking up uh according to the 1933 and the 48 percent we will break that amount out the 12,000 between the 2280 and then i'm holding down control so i can i can like add these up i let go of control when i scroll down or else it changes okay so there's the 12,000. So that's how we're going to allocate this one out. So let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to go back on over to uh, our expense account. We're going to make this one go to Edison. Edison. That's going to be our utility company that we pay. It's going to be a new vendor. Make that as of the 30th. I'm just going to say cash for the payment method for purposes of the practice problem. We're not going to be using the categories, but the item detail down below once again. So make sure you're down there. We're going to do the same kind of process, setting up a new item and a new account within it. So we're going to say utilities and tab. It's going to ask me to set that up. And I'm going to say, yes, please. We want to make it a non-inventory so we could make it a double-sided or two-sided item or service or whatever and then in the description we're going to say that it's going to be utilities down here sales account is correct on the purchase account we want to make it utilities and we want to make a new expense account which is actually going to be a cost of goods sold account for utilities so i'm going to enter utilities say uh, actually <laughs> utilities we're going to have to differentiate it because they have a utilities in there but i want to make this a sub account so i'm going to make it utilities jobs and I might want to overwrite that other utility. In any case, I'm going to add, I'm going to make it jobs just to differentiate it. And then, because I don't want it in an expense account, I want it to be part of the cost of goods sold. More specifically, the cost of goods sold under the overhead type of account. So I'm going to make it cost of goods sold type of account. We're going to make it an other here. I'm going to make it a sub account. This in the sub account of the overhead account. So I want to make it an overhead. Just like we did, just like we did before. So we set up a new account here, sub account of the overhead, save it. We also set up a new item right here. So we're going to save that. And then here, there we have it. That's it. And so the rate we're going to say is going to be 2280. We'll make it a billable item. And then with this first one's going to be going to job number 1414 or project, whatever you want to call it and then utilities again so utilities item this one for the amount of 3960 we're going to make that a billable item this one going to job number one five or project number one five however you want to label that then utilities one more time we only get one more utilities that's going to be for the amount of five seven six zero 
that too, billable and job number 16 this time, job number 16, one six. So there we have that. These amounts, of course, line up to the amounts that we have allocated up here. I'm gonna now make this uh, yellow. I hope they do, I'm pretty sure they do. I'm not gonna get too, too picky on the check. So we're gonna say that, we'll check them out, obviously the financials, but in any case, there is that. And then what's this gonna do when we record it? It's going to be decreasing the cash account by the 12,000 because we're going to be actually paying Edison. Then it's going to be allocating to the utilities account, but this time to cost of goods sold, the sub account, cost of goods sold type of account under the uh, overhead uh, account and be allocating them to job 14, 15, and 16 according to these amounts respectively. Let's do it again. We're going to say save and new again. And let's check out the next one, going back to our Excel worksheet and checking out what we got next. So next is the factory rent, factory rent. So same process, we're saying we're paying rent on the factory where we do work. So we don't, we need to allocate that to the jobs to overhead somehow, but we're gonna have to use a percentage to do that. Same journal entry then, debiting cost of goods sold, crediting the cash cost of goods sold when we put it into our system will be further broken out into the subcategory of overhead and rent. And then we need to break that 20,000 out into the jobs. We will do so with our percentages of the 19, 33, and 48 for job 14, 15, and 16, respectively. The numbers then being that 3,800, that 6,600, and then this uh, 9,600 for the total of the 20,000. Okay, same process. We're going to go back on over here. This is going to be good times. We're going to set up a new vendor, and we're just going to call it Rental Company. That's their name, Rental Company. Not very creative name, but, you know, that's our rent. That's who we pay, like, the rent to for our warehouse or wherever we do our working. And so that's going to be out of the checking account, so we're actually going to be paying them with the checking account. There's going to be the date as of the 30th. We can make it cash or a check, whatever. I'm going to make it cash for the purposes of our practice problem. Remember that we're going to be down here in the detail area. We're going to set up a new product and service and a new account as we set up the product and service. That's going to be called rent. So rent. So we're going to add rent. Now, I could say add rent for the job. We don't actually have an account called rent, so I can just call it rent and apply it to the type of account, the job type of account. We're going to be saying it's a non-inventory item, so we can use that double-sided item again, which is what we want to do. And we're going to say description is just going to be rent, and it's going to the correct sales account, then purchases rent, and then I want to set up a new account down here as well. So I'm going to type in rent, and then not rent and leases, I'm gonna just say rent, uh, and, and I might wanna call it for job or factory rent, and then say tab, and then I'm gonna set that up. I wanna make sure it's a cost of goods sold type of account. It's gonna be, I'll just put it into other cost of goods sold, and then I'm gonna say that uh, it's gonna be a subcategory of the factory overhead. So the factory overhead now has some subcategorization we're going to say save and close. There's that setup. Set up the account. Now, once I say save and close here, that sets up the item. Then we have the rent. That looks good. And we'll just put in our amounts again, that being for the 3800 This is going to be billable. And then this is going to be starting out for job number 14. Job number 14. Then we're going to be going to the rent again. Rent again and uh that's going to be rent and this is going to be for the amount of 6600 this is going to be billable as well and job number 15 so now that's job number 15 and then we're going to go to the rent in case you thought we we're going to switch things up no rent and then this is going to be for the amount of 9600 this is going to be for a billable item and we have a series going this is job number 16 or project number, however you want to call it. What's this going to do when we record it? Well, it's going to be decreasing the checking account by the 20000 The items are going to be driving it to the proper expense accounts, which will be the cost of goods sold accounts, and then, of course, allocating them to the jobs 14, 15, and 16. Let's go ahead and say save and close this time, even though we're not done yet. I'm going to say save and close. And then if I go back on over to Excel now, uh, I'm going to make these yellow because we've done those. Yellow means done right now. I usually like making green done, but they were already green, so we're going to make them 
green to yellow yellow means done so we're going to go back on over here and then we say that next we have the depreciation so depreciation is a little bit different because we're not paying anybody right we're recording a, a depreciation so that's a little bit different to record now note that the journal entry is the same it's going to be a debit to the depreciation to the cost of goods sold which we're then going to have to allocate because we're depreciating equipment that was used on multiple jobs we'll use the same kind of allocation method but the credit's not going to cash it's going to to accumulated depreciation which we have that similar kind of problem because uh how are we gonna you know what type of form are we gonna use if we use the expense usually the cash goes down so we're gonna have to use a similar kind of method we've seen in the past but the allocation then is going to be similar over here in terms of the expenses we're going to allocate 19 percent 33 percent 49 percent 14 15 and 16 jobs respectively that 5,700, the 9,900, and the uh, 14,400, then adding up to that 30,000. All right, let's go back on over and see how we can do this. We're going to go back on over to QuickBooks. Now, we actually will use the same form type and expense type of form. We're just going to use it in a, in a little bit different way. One you might, you know, be guessing right now because we have done a familiar or similar process here in the past. So let's let's do this. We're going to go up top. We're going to say say now we don't have any really anybody to write the check to so we could say miscellaneous again because again we're kind of using this at, to have a zero balance it's not going to be affecting the checking account so i'm going to write this then to the clearing account this time because again this is going to be a clearing journal entry it's not actually going to be decreasing the checking account in any way so i'd like to put it in the clearing just to indicate that and then i'm going to put it uh at the end of the in this the, the method's going to be cash so we'll do the cash again and then down below we're going to start off with the items do the items the same way and then we're going to go to the category to make the other side of the transaction so the items are recording the expense depreciation expense then the category will record the other side which will be the accumulated depreciation okay so let's do that we're going to do the same process here same same items to start off with so we're going to say this is going to be depreciation, a new, a new item. So I'm going to say add that tab. We're going to add this item. It's going to be a non-inventory item. I'm going to copy the depreciation name. I'm going to be putting that in the description down below. We're also going to be putting it into the purchase and the double-sighted item. And then I'm going to make a new account called depreciation. And I'm going to call this depreciation uh, job or factory I should call it or something like that to differentiate and then I'm going to say tab it's not going to go to an expense account but rather to a cost of goods sold account and we want to make this I'm going to make this other and then on this side I'm going to make it a sub account so we're going to make it a sub account of the overhead once again sub account of the overhead so same process save and close and then now we're going to save and close the item so there we have that. There's the depreciation. Let's put in our amounts now, which are going to be 5700. This is going to be a billable item and job number 14. All right. And then we've got depreciation. We'll do this again. Depreciation. And this is going to be for 9900. That'll be billable. And it's going to be job number 15. Job number 15. Job number 15. Then we're going to do it again. Depreciation again there it is and this is going to be for the amount of 14400 and that's going to be billable as well so we'll say it is billable yes and job number 16 job number 16 that adds up to our 30,000 if we left it like this we'd have 30,000 up top and we're not paying anybody anybody for depreciation so these amounts, these items below, will properly record it to the to the expense account that we want and allocate it to the job. But the other side needs to go to accumulated depreciation, for which we will use the category detail up top. And then we're going to say the category should be accumulated depreciation for the negative thirty thousand. This one's not billable, and and we're not going to assign a customer to it. All right, so I hope we did all this correctly. I'm going to say save and close. I'm pretty sure we did. I feel good. About, I feel good. But we're going to check it out now. So I'm going to say save and close. And let's go on over to our reports. We're going to go to the reports on the left-hand side, starting off, of course, with the balance sheet report. Let's open up that balance sheet report and see what we have thus far. Let's close up the old hamburger up top. 
Uh, I'm going to hold down control and scroll up to get up to that 125. That's where I like to be, even though they give me this little warning to reset stuff. But I think it's okay. So we're going to be down here and we can go into the checking account. If I go into the checking account, we can see that uh, the checking account has gone down drastically for the amounts that we have paid. And we have our checks that we have written here. If we were to select one of them, let's pick this 20,000 item. Uh, 20,000 that's going to take us to of course our expense this one being for the rent so those those there's those items coming out of the checking account so then if we go back uh, go back up top and go back to our balance sheet report we also note that uh, we have the fixed asset we have the accumulated depreciation which was recorded if I go into that accumulated depreciation you see the amount that was recorded here with our expense form so that looks good and that was the 30,000 related to it scrolling back up let's go on back to our uh, balance sheet and then let's open up our income statement so let's go up top to our, our tab up top right click on that tab duplicate that tab put in the balance sheet on the right then go back to the left so we can open the income statement by opening first up the hamburger then go into the reports down below then we're looking for that P&L, that profit and loss, that income statement. So I'm going to hold down control. Oh, there it is. I, I don't have to minimize the screen. I was going to make the screen smaller to see it, but I don't need to do that, it looks like. Then we'll close up the hamburger here. Closing up the burger. And we can then see down here, if we if we look at the, the detail, notice the dates. Of course, I'm in 2020. So as long as we're in uh, January 2020 and beyond we should be okay so then we have our cost of goods sold if i was to minimize the cost of goods sold that now is at the 674,000. does that match what's on our excel worksheet and it does there's the 674,000 in the cost of goods sold that's only the current you know the current data the current information for the for 2020 and then if i go on back over and we were to expand this if we were to expand this now I can then see our subcategories in cost of goods sold, including the direct labor, the direct materials, and the overhead. So there's the direct labor, direct materials, and the overhead. If I was to expand, say, the overhead, now we've got our, our detail within the overhead. We could break out the different categories within overhead, which we can, of course, do as well with uh, the direct materials. So you can see all the, all the detailed information we have there. Then we can break this out by job. Or, and so if I select the drop down, I can go by customer now. So if I go by customer and I run that report once again, then we can see our jobs. That's going to be 14, 15, and 16. So same kind of detail. We can see our detailed information. I'm going to, I'm going to minimize the materials and the overhead for job 14, 15, and 16, totaling up to that uh, 674,000 for the total on all the jobs in the income statement that's all we have right now is this job information that should tie out then to the balance sheet in the equity section that's going to be the 674,000 here let's go back to the income statement now what if I wanted to see the full open jobs then I can go back to 2019 let's bring this on back to uh, 2019 2019 and run that report and we should get all the all the detail for all the open activity for the life of span of the job that now adding up to 191 let's minimize these these here i'm going to minimize the materials and the overhead so job number 14 totals out at 191 140 let's just check our numbers here so uh this totals out at the 191 140 which ties our our excel worksheet and then if we go back on over the the second job job 15 is 314 980 so 314 980 that looks good let's then go to job number 16 and that is going to be for the 25880 so the 250880 that's good let's look at the sub subcategories of them uh, job 14 has uh, labor 48 materials 114 and overhead 29 140 so if we go back on over we've got the 114 direct labor the 48 or direct materials labor the 48 and the factory eight overhead the 29 140 and then job 15 has direct materials 188 thousand direct materials 84 overhead 42 980 if we go then to 
to the second job. We've got labor, 48,000, 188,000 for the materials, overhead, 42,980. Finally, job 16, labor, 120,000, 80,000 for the materials, overhead, 50,880. So if we go back on over here for the last job, we've got the 80,000 direct materials, 120,000 direct labor and the factory overhead at the 50,880. So I think I think we're good. I went over that a little bit quickly, but I think that works. Okay, so now let's right click on this tab up top. I'm going to right click on this tab again, duplicate that tab, then go back to the tab to the left. And you can also open up the hamburger over here and just consider this information within the projects screen. So I'm going to hold down control, scroll down just a bit to get down to that 100% now. Then we can go into the projects, see it a little bit better, close up the hamburger once the projects are open. And then I like to go down even a little bit smaller because that allows me for my computer screen to, to see our different jobs. I'm going to go then into job number 14. Within job number 14, you can see, of course, the more data from a job by job perspective. We're now at the 191, 190. Here's the direct materials, kind of a little breakout for you here and the overhead. And then you can go into the more information with the project uh, reports into each job by job format. Remember, it's nice to be able to break out and look at all the open jobs and be able to kind of tie out the information in, in the format of seeing uh, the total jobs. So you can run the report to see the total job activity and then and then break out the beginning balances so that if you needed to kind of do a conversion at the end of the year to be on a completed contract basis or percentage of completion basis, you can then make some adjusting entries possibly as needed to break out that information into something like a, a work in process account and or finished goods accounts if those are needed. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.